From one Englishman to another, Mark, why don't you come and tell the guys a bit more about the products that we've got here today and put some flesh on the, on the bones for me. Okay, thank you, Alan. Uh, good afternoon, uh, gentlemen. Um, good, good to see you. you. Welcome from, uh, from me. I'm not going to spend too, uh, too long talking about uh, the products that uh, are here today because you'll have plenty of opportunity to evaluate them for yourself, but also you'll have an opportunity to get much more detail from the press kit that Andreas referred to earlier. So I am going to be very brief. Um, these are the models that are on uh, uh, with us today that you'll be able to, to evaluate for yourselves. Um, these are five new models for Europe, which reinforces everything that Alan's just told you about our determination uh, to become a very credible and uh, a credible European brand and to become a major player uh, in this market uh, in the foreseeable future. Um, let me start with I-30 Wagon. Um, we believe that I-30 is the best possible evidence that we can give you for our intentions in Europe uh, because it truly is a European car. As Alan said, most successful brands in Europe have built their success around their C-Sigma product. VW is Golf, uh, Focus and Escort were synonymous with Ford. Um, we want I-30 to be the centre of gravity for our brand. Um, partly because the segment is so important for defining brands, but also because this car epitomises uh, everything that we're trying to do in terms of moving our quality perception forward in the C segment. Um, the, uh, the, the wagon was conceived alongside the five door, so I hope that you can see that uh, a lot of the dynamic um, uh, design that was put into the five door is also very clear in the wagon, despite the fact that it is a, a longer car um, with increased luggage capacity, the styling um, still conceals that load capacity, which has actually increased by 27% compared to the outgoing model with all the, uh, the, the, with the um, uh, seats folded up, um, giving you 528 litres of trunk space. And with the seats folded down, that grows to 1,642 litres, which is up 18% on the previous model. Um, our R&D colleagues, um, our engineering team from Russelsheim, have really uh, developed what we would consider to be a highly competitive car, not just in terms of, of the design um, and the packaging of the car, but also, for example, through the safety. You know that the five-door the five door has already been uh, awarded five-star Euro NCAP uh, safety rating. Um, it was one of the best performing cars in the NCAP tests. 90% uh, rating for adult occupancy, um, and 90% child occupancy um, uh, rating, which was best in class, um, a best in class result. Um, Alan's already referred to our technical center at Russellsheim being our diesel center of excellence. They continue uh, to perform uh, you know, miracles in driving down um, the CO2 emissions and fuel consumption of our cars from conventional uh, gasoline and diesel engines. Um, and I think that uh, new I-30 is a very good example of that because they've achieved an outstanding 97 grams of CO2 from the 1.6 litre uh, diesel engine which develops 128 PS uh, power output. The wagon um, will be similarly efficient, uh, achieving 110 grams from the same 1.6 diesel engine. Um, one of the issues that we have with, with convincing European uh, consumers of the credibility of our brand is they have some, some prejudices about whether Hyundai and whether Korean brands are capable of producing uh, quality of cars that they expect in the European market. Um, durability, reliability is something they, they're concerned about. So with this car, I can tell you that there has been um, uh, more than half a million kilometres of testing carried out um, and also in the, in, on the Euro roads of Europe specifically focused on what European drivers require from products uh, in this market. Um, that includes, for example, the, uh, the addition, development of flex steer, uh, a system which allows the driver to alter the steering assistance, um, which means they have three modes, normal, comfort and sport. Um, and it seems that, that, that what these guys have done at Russellsheim, uh, in terms of the design, and uh, the engineering is produce a car that's already 
getting us some significant success uh, in every market around Europe. Um, thanks to your positive result, uh, uh, response to the car, um, we've seen lots of very positive press. Um, we've had a number of accolades from, your, from you, from your colleagues, um, and from automotive organisations. And most importantly for us, most importantly for us, is that it is generating traffic from customers that we have never seen to our brand before, um, who are starting to recognise that we have a very high quality proposition and a credible alternative to some of the more established brands in the C segment. Um, the five doors here today um, for you to re-familiarise yourself um, with it, but with the wagon we're expecting to build on the success of I30. Um, just as a, a, a very interesting point is that although the car is built specifically for Europe, um, we've just received news that the car is actually going to be imported into the US um, as an Elantra GT. And those of you who know the US market will know that that, uh, that subcompact market is mainly a sedan driven uh, customer uh, proposition. So for the US to see this, the styling and design of this car to be so strong and appealing that they're going to import it to the US, I think tells you uh, everything you need to know um, about how well that particular design has been received. Moving on to uh, Santa Fe, um, this represents further proof <coughs> of our heritage in SUV, in, in 4x4. The brand in the early days in, in, in this market was built very much around our SUV heritage and around uh, Santa Fe. Um, it has great global heritage, not just obviously in Europe, but also uh, globally. It's actually one of the most, if not the most well-known model in our range uh, in Europe, which is why we took the decision to keep the name uh, Santa Fe. Um, in terms of design, uh, you know that all of our models now are in inspired by our, uh, by our design language, fluidic sculpture. With Santa Fe, the designers have created their own uh, a unique uh, interpretation of fluidic sculpture, which is called Storm Edge, which is a more aggressive uh, and more dynamic uh, interpretation of fluidic uh, sculpture. And I'm sure that you can see from the images on the screen, but also when you see the car outside, that it is a much more uh, aggressive and dynamic car, um, particularly when compared to its pre uh, predecessor. That dynamism in its uh, styling and design uh, comes um, not just from the lines in the design, but also from the fact that it, is, uh, it has a lower roof line. It's longer, wider car, but you can see that because um, it's wider and longer and lower, it looks much more robust um, on the road and has a, an extremely aggressive um, and dynamic stance. Um, but that styling um, and design has not compromised at all on comfort and quality. There's been significant enhancements um, in both of those aspects. As I mentioned, longer and wider uh, body means more passenger space, but also more trunk space. Um, there's a significant improvement in the level of the uh, quality of materials on the interior. I hope that you will see that for yourselves when you're in the car. Um, and there's been an improvement in the levels of equipment available um, to Santa Fe drivers, including auto cruise control, for example, uh, lane departure warning system, and an active hood for pedestrian safety. Um, as I said before, um, our engineers continue to drive fantastic efficiency from gasoline and diesel engines, and that is definitely the case with uh, new Santa Fe. The 2.2 litre um, R diesel engine will produce um, 197 PS of power output, and yet will achieve uh, 147 grams of CO2. And, uh, you know, I think we're becoming a little bit, uh, maybe a little bit complacent about the, the, the level of progress that's being made with CO2, but you cannot have imagined uh, five years ago that a car of this capability would be able to produce um, a power output of 997 PS and still be able to, uh, to be reduced 147 grams. So the guys are doing a fantastic job. Um, we expect this car, because it's a much more uh, appealing design, much more dynamic, um, to attract many, many more new customers to the brand alongside those who are visiting our showrooms to see the new i30. Typically there'll be male buyers, um, empty nesters or 40 plus year olds um, with families who are looking fundamentally for great design in an SUV package, but with quality, technology, <coughs> versatility and of course safety. Um, Alan mentioned earlier on that our segment share or our brand share for the year is targeted at 3.5%.
With Santa Fe, we're expecting to punch just above that weight at 5.5% uh, share of the sector. As uh, Andreas has already said, please, when you, when you evaluate the car, bear in mind that this is what we call P2 stage, prototype stage. Um, so I think there's an, another two stages before final production. So if you can just bear with us. Um, next car is uh, I-20, uh, new I-20. Um, it's been on sale for a few weeks now. It went on sale in the UK, I think, in May. And it's gone on sale in the rest of uh, Europe in the last uh, few weeks. Um, and as Alan said, we've already seen um, a, a huge improvement in our sales pace. Um, for example, he mentioned France and the UK, where we've seen uh, double-digit growth already. Um, today, you have a chance um, to drive the uh, to, to see the car and drive the new 1.1 diesel U2 engine. Um, this is the three-cylinder diesel engine that has the lowest CO2 of any um, combustion engine available, as far as I can uh, tell. Um, globally, uh, 84 grams of CO2. I believe the version that's here doesn't have the blue drive package, so it's not 84 grams, but the engine is, is uh, when combined with the blue drive package, uh, is, is achieving 84 grams. Um, we're selling, we've been selling on average around uh, 75,000 units annually of I-20 since it was introduced, but as Alan said, we're not satisfied at all. We need to really uh, break into the B segment um, and uh, in the foreseeable, foreseeable future, push towards 100,000 units if we're going to uh, claim our, our, our uh, stake to be a major player in Europe. Um, we believe this car will start moving us towards that 100,000 um, um, uh, figure um, because it's more than just a facelift. Um, there are quite significant changes to the styling and design. Um, fluidic sculpture um, is even more apparent because of the change um, in the, uh, in the, in the um, uh, front face design and particularly the grille. There's been a big improvement to the interior quality of materials, which I hope you'll see when you, when you get inside the car today. Um, plus, we've introduced a number of specs, a number of uh, um, new equipment that you wouldn't normally expect to see on B segment products. I'm not going to go into the list, it's in all the details that we'll provide you in your press kit, but it will certainly give B segment <coughs> drivers much more than they would have uh, expected um, from Hyundai. And then on top of that, um, every market uh, now has a standard five year triple care available on I-20. So our five year unlimited mileage warranty, five years of uh, vehicle health checks um, with our dealers, and five years of roadside assistance is now standard um, as a package, customer care package uh, across every market. Um, moving on to two sports cars um, that we have uh, available for you today, two sports derivatives. First, Veloster Turbo. Um, this is a car that has been introduced with a, uh, a, a, an added layer of performance. Um, it retains, of course, because it's, it's unique in this respect, it re retains its unique one plus two door configuration. Um, but now is available with this turbocharged uh, powertrain that has been specifically tuned for Europe. Um, you will see that in the US they sell this car um, with, I think, 208 horsepower. Um, we have, uh, our version is 186 horsepower because we wanted better um, uh, low end torque um, in the low uh, rev range. So you will find that it's specifically tuned for European driving tastes. Um, so the, one point, uh, the 186 PS um, is, is del delivered from the 1.6 litre turbo GDI engine, which accelerates from 0 to 100 kilometres per hour in 8.1 8 uh, seconds. And it's available with six-speed manual uh, auto or auto transmission, um, which have uh, paddle shift operation. Um, we think that the car, uh, although as Alan says, we're finding our feet with this car, it's definitely saying a lot about the brand and its determination to build great design with great passion and great emotion. Um, Veloster is a great head turner and this car uh, is even more of a head turner because um, it adds to its, uh, to its unique design um, some sports styling that gives it a very aggressive and sporty look. But of course the packaging uh, is still unique in the sense that it, is, it gives a cross between the functionality of a typical five-door, say, five-door hatchback, but with all of the, 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 the emotion and desire of a coupe. So in that respect, it truly is uh, a unique car. Um, 
Moving now on to uh, Genesis, Genesis Coupe, um, uh, only on sale for the moment in left hind drive market, so not available um, in, in the UK. Um, second sports model we've got today, representing the sporting performance benchmark for Hyundai in, uh, in Europe. Um, the, this facelifted Genesis Coupe was introduced in, uh, in January at uh, Detroit Motor Show in the US and then we had a European debut of it at uh, Geneva um, in March. Um, it's been redesigned um, to give a more exciting and aggressive exterior appearance, um, I'm sure you'd agree, um, that is uh, absolutely um, appropriate to a car of this type of performance. And the uh, reshaping of the front end, particularly the hexagonal grille, makes it very, very recognisable as, as a Hyundai. Um, in terms of powertrains, it has two um, significantly upgraded powertrains, the 3.8 litre V6 GDI, um, the most powerful unit that we have on offer in the European range, um, developing 347 PS of power, and um, the car we have today, the 2 litre turbo, uh, which generates 275 uh, PS. Um, and the car comes with six-speed manual, or our in-house developed um, eight-speed automatic um, transmission. So moving from a performance car to a, a performance car in a, in a slightly um, different sense, which is our fuel cell, IX35 fuel cell, um, uh, an ultra-efficient internal, com um, moving from ultra-efficient internal combustion engines to future technology that's absolutely available today. Um, and if you haven't already driven it before or today, uh, I hope you do get a chance this afternoon. We've been utilising this car um, over several months. Uh, we actually have seven units that are in operation in European markets, uh, particularly some of the Nordic markets and also here in Germany. The trials are being used in, in collaboration with a number of uh, government and non-government bodies, first of all to prove the viability of this technology, but also to promote um, the investment in the infrastructure that's needed in Europe in the future uh, to sustain um, fuel cells in, in numbers. And we're seeing the number of uh, fuel stations uh, growing quite rapidly. It's still a long way from where it needs to be, um, but the investment uh, is being made. Um, one of the most recent uh, exercises that we took um, uh, with the uh, IX35 fuel cell was a 314 uh, kilometer zero rally across Norway and Sweden. Uh, which it did comfortably on a single fueling with plenty of range uh, to spare. The, the stack that, um, that you can uh, evaluate today is our third generation um, of fuel cell. Um, it, it has a 100 kilowatt uh, power output. It's capable of 160 kilometers per hour and it's got a range of 560 kilometers which makes those, that set of statistics makes it um, one of the most competitive that's currently on trial uh, in Europe. Um, in the latest generation, the most uh, significant improvement was in the reduction of manufacturing costs, mainly driven by material cost reductions. Um, uh, we understand that the reduction has been about 80% in cost, but also improved fuel efficiency by um, about 15%. The reason so it, why it's so significant the reduction in, in the cost of manufacturing is because it gives us a strong indication and, and great confidence in the viability of this technology in the future. And uh, Hyundai is extremely confident that we can bring uh, this technology to mass production um, from uh, 2015. And we believe that this is an area where we can establish a leadership position. Um, this fuel cell technology has already been recognized. Um, Interbrand um, carry out a, a global study, a number of global studies, include, including one that they call the best global green brands. Um, it was uh, the latest version was published last month, and Hyundai was placed uh, 17th uh, out of all categories, all industries um, of global uh, green brands, um, and we were one of only eight car uh, makers in the top 50. Um, and Interbrand specifically talked about our development of fuel cell as a reason for considering us to be one of the global best green brands.